Hello, good morning and welcome to my 47th weekly video, Living with Alzheimer's. Today I want to talk a little bit about memory, and I know that maybe it's something that I've spoken about before, but I do get asked lots, lots of questions <coughs> about uh, memory issues, and um, as we all know that dementia affects all aspects of our lives and not just the memories. <coughs> but I want to talk a little bit about people like me, I suppose, chasing our own thoughts. Um, this, I don't know, one of, I suppose, one of the best ways to try and explain a little bit is if you've got a hectic day at the office or whatever work you do, or you've got an especially big shot to do, and you have written a list, a detailed list of, of what you want so that you don't forget anything. That's the sort of thing that people like me have to live with every day. We're making lists in our minds. We're making lists physically. And we are trying to chase our thoughts. We are trying to keep up with what's going on around us. And in actual fact, the more that's going on around us, the more difficult a task it, it becomes. Alzheimer's sits on my shoulder and he whispers in my ear most days. And he tends to take my thoughts as I make them. And that's, that's a big problem because we're constantly trying to remember to remember. And that can be very, very hard work and extremely frustrating. So I think the, the, the shopping list scenario is probably actually a very, very good one. You've got this list of detailed of sugar, eggs or whatever it is you want. And the stuff that you want so that you don't forget anything. And as you're going around the shop, you're probably striking stuff off this long list. Yeah, that is that is definitely what life is like. Life to us is a big, big, big shopping list that we are constantly doing. I write many things down. We have a whiteboard, which I'm sure many other people do. I have post-it notes all over the place. But some of the problems is that trying to remember what I have written. So, for instance, sometimes I write things down and I know exactly what it's about at that particular time when I've wrote it. If I go back to it an hour later, I have absolutely no idea what that's actually relevant to. And I have written something down, but it has no bearing on anything that I can remember. So in actual fact, the list becomes completely and utterly totally useless. And I think as time goes on, that's, that, that gradually happens more and more. Technology is good. Um, technology as an external memory is a great thing. Um, some of these, uh, like the, uh, I think it's called the Amazon Echo, and that sort of thing is great for prompting and you know, you have an event or you have uh, you have something coming up um, at half past two or whatever. They are great because they become a little sort of, I suppose, a little PA in your house, really, a little personal assistant in your house. And um, yeah, that um, that is a great benefit. But sometimes it can be very difficult trying to remember if you have remembered something. And that also is a, is a very difficult place to be. And also people I find like me, and I'm, I'm sure that many others are like this, and I'm sure there'll be some heads nodding in a little while when I say this. Sometimes I try and avoid answering certain questions um, because I don't know the answer and I don't want to seem, I don't want to seem stupid. And I, I know it's a very, very ridiculous thing to say. But if somebody says something about my car, I, I have no knowledge of, of what make or model or year. I don't, I don't even know what colour our car is, and I'm sure we've had it for a long, long while. And I think rather than say to people, oh, I, I don't know anything about our car, I have no knowledge, then I'll, I'll just, oh, well, it's my wife's car, and, and I'll breeze over it somehow and try and move on to something else to talk about because um yeah sometimes sometimes the frustration can can lead you into into a little bit of a corner this this memory issue that you don't really want to be in having too much information being bombarded with too much information is is also very very difficult 
today I'm sitting here all on my own doing the video. That's fine. If there was a few other people around and maybe somebody outside that I could see through the window, it's, it's a distraction. There's too much going on. Too much information is, yeah, is, is, is very, very difficult to absorb. One to one is pretty good. It's, it's pretty doable. So I hope that that answers the question that I was asked about memory by quite a few people over the due course of the last, I don't know, fortnight or three weeks, I think. Um, little update on the cycle challenge. Well, the, the plot thickens. Um, I, this is, a, this is another thing about memory. I don't remember if I've been out on a cycle ride, so I have been writing them all down in a little book um, because actual fact, here's the thing, when it, this is something, when I get back, from my cycle ride in the morning, let's just say, um, I might sit here a little while and then I'm not really sure if I've been or not. Did I go out on my bike? So then I have to refer to my little book to say, you know, you went out and done 25 miles or whatever on this date, uh, AM. So that I, right, okay, yeah, I have been out. I thought I had, but I wasn't really sure. <laughs> that can, um, yeah, that can be interesting sometimes because on occasions, if I don't write it in the book, I'm sure I go out twice in one day but um anyway still training hard for the cycle challenge um a little bit of an update here the two colleagues that i were going to do the cycle challenge with have unfortunately had to um back out at this time um one of the one of the people i was with has had quite a serious health issue and has meant that um yeah they can no longer cycle with me so at the moment i'm cycling some of it on my own, uh, with support from the uh, support vehicle, of, of course. Um, and I think some people are going to join me on the way at, at different places. But um, yeah, if anybody out there is a cyclist and they would like to join me for the the whole cycle row, ride from Wales back through to Suffolk as a cycling buddy, uh, that would be good because um, it was a challenge a big challenge to me on many different levels uh, prior and having three of us or having two people with me cycling um, it has now become a big uh, challenge doing part of it on my own and the navigation part of it I've got to get my head around that and, and try and use some technology to help me but uh, yeah the whole thing has become a bigger challenge which yeah, am I looking forward to it? Yeah, I am a little bit, and it's a little bit scary as well doing it on my own, because um, I know there'll be places where I will be on my own because the support vehicle won't be anywhere near me because I'm following a national cycle route. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be scary, but good, maybe. Um, we'll see. But, yeah, if there's anybody out there and you private message me, I, I'd, I'd love to have somebody to, to cycle with just to, um, yeah, just to keep me on track, because... I'm having this feeling that I might end up doing a lot more miles than is necessary. <laughs> anyway, hope to hear from somebody uh, very soon. Do have a good weekend. Have a wonderful week. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm talking. Uh, I've got a talk coming up, I think, later on um, at somewhere to do with the Dementia Awareness Week. So, yeah, that'll be um, that'll be interesting. Thank you so much for listening again. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I did watch last week's video. I'm a little happier, a little perkier. Yeah, and not quite so tired this week. So maybe I haven't been out so many times on my bike. And maybe I've been, maybe I've been writing it down on my little book more than I should do. Maybe that was the problem last week. Instead of going out um, once, maybe I was going out twice or maybe even three days a week. Hey, who knows? But uh, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye, and I'll see you all next week.